Hello, my name is Haley, and recently I have come into possession of an amazing box of vintage patterns, and nobody else in my house appreciates them like I do, so I thought that I would share them with the internet because what better place to find people with your same hobbies? Let's not waste any time, vintage patterns are way more interesting than I am, so let's just get right into this. And we're going to go through these pretty quick, starting with the Simplicity Blouse Pattern, featuring their new sizing for the 1960s. Moving on to this McCall's. It's a very sweet pattern. I like the different options for it. And I'm just going to apologize right now for any poor quality footage. I don't really have any filming equipment, so you get what you get. This one I already have, and I love that you can do the pin tucking, the different collars, and it buttons down the back. This Vogue is pretty simple and easy yet elegant, and I just love that. We love a good basic. Same thing with this Butterick. It's a pretty simple blouse, but would be a great staple in any wardrobe. Here we have a nice Simplicity 70s shirt dress in just multiple lengths, and a 1960s coat dress. I really love this one. It's very cute. And a Simplicity bonus basic pattern. This isn't a half size, and if it was in my size, I would totally be keeping it. These are really great for fitting, and especially if you want to make stuff from that era. This is an awesome juniors pattern. I love how summery it is, and you can do the slim skirt or the full skirt. It's really great in that late 50s transitional period to the 60s slim skirts. And I actually have a pattern very similar to this one from the calls that I absolutely love. I've seen brands do this before where maybe something's pretty popular and so a couple years later they'll come out with their own version. And here it is. Here's McCall's 8575 and Simplicity 1284. They're quite similar. Obviously there's differences but it's the same basic idea. Simplicity has a six gore skirt and the McCall's has a four-paneled A-line skirt. Obviously, the shirts are a little bit different. The neckline on the McCall's is much wider, but they have that exact same detailed shape. I just think it's kind of funny, and this is not the first time I have seen that. And moving on to the 1960s again, we have another half-size pattern with a slim skirt or a fuller skirt. And this is a really interesting 60s pattern. I love the way that this sleeve is inset. It's very unique and I have not seen that before. Here we have another half size pattern for a summer dress and bolero. Very cute, love the pockets. This one I am super excited about. It came in two different sizes in the box, a bust 40 and a bust 38. I will be keeping the bust 40 and Sending on the bus 38 to somebody else who will love it. I need more simple shirt dresses for everyday wear. And I love the ginormous pockets. Big fan. Very excited. And here we have a Butterick 1960s house coat. Not really my jam. I'm not a house coat person. So somebody else will love this. And here we have a 1940s Anna Adams pattern in its wax sleeve. It has some very interesting details. It's like a nice house dress. The little side ties are a little weird and not quite my taste, but it is very pretty and has some really sweet features. Here we have an early 70s McCall suit pattern. I like that it has really slick, clean lines. Very nice. And this, I love how many options this simplicity jumper and blouse pattern gives you for necklines and sleeves. I love a good jumper and you really need versatility. Now this is a really interesting faux pattern. I've never seen one quite like it. It comes with the patterns for a shirtwaist dress, shorts, a tunic, and pants, and the tie belt. So here are those line drawings. It's very interesting. I've never seen one quite like that. And the way it's styled is very interesting as well. Very indicative of the time in which it was released. I've never had a full suit set from the 60s before. So this is very fun to see. I love that it has a little scalloped bottom to the blouse, a jacket, an A-line skirt, and a full coat. You can see the pattern here is a little bit fat. The previous owner had gone through the patterns and organized them into little bundles of what 
article of clothing they went with. So here you have the skirt and the coat. They were held together with rubber bands. Um, it's kind of unfortunate, but at least I know all the pattern pieces were there. Now this is a 1970s suit set as well. We love to see a pant and a skirt. And here's another McCall's full wardrobe set. It's very interesting to see pants being worn with a dress. And this I thought was a skirt and blouse and jacket when it's actually a dress made out of contrasting fabric, which I thought was really fun for giving you more versatility to play with colors and patterns. This is just a nice, simple 1950s boxy suit. The skirt has this really interesting, the skirt has this really interesting front flap. I don't even know what to call it, but it kind of looks like it might zip down the front. And here we have the first of a few mail order patterns. This is from Marianne Martin, and I cannot wait to make these up. I love that it gives you the different options. Each blouse has its own complete set of pattern pieces, which is very fun. And I absolutely love B with that pointed yoke. It's very unique. I've never seen that before. Now moving on to Anne Adams, this is a very interesting one. I've recently come across one other pattern that did something similar with that trim, where the trim is sewn into the darts in the shoulder. It's a very interesting way to trim your dress. This is a really cute 60s dress. The pattern pieces are a little funky, and I cannot figure out how they're supposed to go together, but it's very fun. 60s had some pretty interesting stuff. And here's a 1970s mail order pattern. It's cute, not really my favorite. And this one's from Ann Adams. Now, this was a really fun find. This is a Dickies pattern from the 1940s. Dickies were really popular during World War II because they allowed you to create more options for your wardrobe. And she's got this thing in her hand that looks like a lettuce leaf. I think it's called a jabot or something. But I just love that it looks like a lettuce leaf. It's pretty funny. You can hear, you can see all the different pieces and kind of the way they would go together. This is an interesting McCall's apron. It has a transfer for what looks like peppers. It buttons at the back and ties. And I thought that this one was from the 1930s based on the text. And really, and really it's from 1944. I, you could have fooled me. I thought it was from the 30s. Maybe it's a reprint, who knows. And here's another simplicity slip bra, and I think those are called tap pants. Uh, basically, it's an underwear pattern. Very, very pretty. And here we have a cute little simplicity kids pajama set. It comes with a transfer for the embroidery, though, like usual, it's probably not actually in there. And here is an interesting butterick kids pattern. This one was just interesting from the start. You can make leggings. Although when I was looking, it didn't tell you what kinds of fabric to use. My brain would say that you use knits, but it doesn't say on there anywhere. So that would be interesting. And here I noticed something very weird inside the packet. And what do you know? It's the original receipt for the purchase of this pattern. I love finding little treasures like this. It was purchased for 35 cents plus one cent tax for 36 cents. Here's a McCall's little girl pattern. I love the gathered yokes on the front. It's very cute. And this one is just about the same thing, but pleated instead of gathered. Both very sweet. I like that this one actually comes with little bloomers for your kids. It probably doesn't include the transfer like usual, but it did include these weird cut pieces of fabric. And here is the one men's pattern out of the entire box that I got. It is a size medium, and it is for long pants, shorts, or a button-up pajama top. This one I really like. I love the peplum top. It kind of threw me off when I first saw it because I thought this was another one of Simplicity 4146. Now, sometimes when patterns come out in the same year, they will reuse the drawings, essentially. I've definitely seen patterns with the same prints before, and I've even seen the ladies standing almost the exact same way. Very funny to see. Don't blame them. But I like this one. This one I absolutely adore. 
It is just so pretty. I love the poofy skirt. And it is for a blouse and skirt or a blouse and jumper. So it makes it way more versatile. And I love the sleeves and that giant poofy bow. It's a little on the smaller side for me, but I just absolutely love it. And will definitely be holding on to this one. And here you can see those pieces. The skirt is just gathered rectangles. So that makes it pretty easy. This is a really nice 1950s butterick pattern. I thought the tabs were very unique and interesting, and I haven't seen that before. And I really like the fullness of the skirt. I'm not a pencil skirt person, but sometimes I don't need a giant poofy ball gown. This, this is just a really nice, simple 1960s dress, and you can jazz it up with detachable collar and cuffs. This lady has seen better days. She's a little worse for wear, but I really do love it. This is quite a beautiful nightgown pattern. I'm really excited to make it one of these days. At some point I'll get around to it, but it is just beautiful. This is a very nice nightgown or house dress I've seen floating around eBay before. I really like the underbust gathered details. This one is so dramatic. I absolutely Love the bat wing sleeves. And if you notice, there's the tucks on the shoulders and the pleats on the skirt that match each other, which I think is a really nice detail. And this one I'm really excited about. The paper on this one was a little bit interesting feeling. Like I almost thought somebody had covered it in plastic. It was just really slick. And here you can kind of see the pattern pieces. Now this pattern felt a lot more papery than the other one. It was just a weird tactile thing I noticed. It's very interesting to know that they changed their types of papers over the years. I love the lantern sleeves on this pattern and it has this really interesting pleat over the button placket. I will be very interested to see how that pleat is supposed to be constructed. This is a really basic butter blouse pattern in a size 40 says quick and easy and I'm absolutely going to be keeping this one. I definitely need more basics in my wardrobe so hopefully this pattern will come in handy when it comes time for making more blouses. I love how this one has those dramatic gathers up into the neck and I just love that the skirt mimics the same thing. I have a McCall's pattern that has a similar detail but I don't quite like it as much so I'll probably desash that one and switch it out for this. This one I was super excited to be finding. It's one I've been wanting to pick up for a while, but haven't really pulled the trigger on, so I'm really glad that I hadn't bought it yet, because then I would have two. I love the scallop detail on what would otherwise be a pretty basic dress pattern. It even has the scalloped pockets, which I think is just so darling, and I'm really excited to make this one up eventually. And here we have a Butterick 1960s robe pattern in long, short, or terry cloth, and it comes with a pattern for, I think what it said, a travel pouch. So whatever that is. This one I've also seen floating around on eBay recently, and I love that it just has this one large circle button placket up at the front. It's a really great statement piece. It would be perfect to use one of those random buttons that you have that goes to nothing. This is a pretty basic dress pattern. And I love the detail of the pin tucks on either side of the button placket. It makes it a lot more dramatic and fancy for an otherwise simple design. I like the different types of sleeves, and since they're all longer, this would be a really great dress for the fall. I absolutely love this pattern. I don't see flutter sleeves very often, and I don't think I've ever seen one on a 1950s pattern. So this one made me really happy, and I love that it has those pleats in the shoulders. And now... We shall be moving on to the really exciting ones, my absolute favorite of the mix. Here we have this beautiful Dewberry nightgown pattern. Dewberries I do not come across very often. They're generally harder to find. They weren't around for a super long time. And this one is for a size 20 and bust 38. And here you can see it's just a simple long front and back piece cut on the fold with yokes and a simple sleeve. I honestly think that if you took off that weird little pocket and made it out of like a nice drapey rayon chalet, this could be a really pretty everyday wear dress. And moving on. 
This next pattern was a really sad sight to be taken out of the box. It was very crumpled and lumpy, and it's still very crumpled, but less lumpy. She has seen better days. I love the scallop detail at the bottom of the suit jacket. And I like that they showed it in different colorways. Now, inside of this pattern right there, it was real, a little bit lumpy, and I found this bag, which really surprised me. I was not expecting to be finding something inside the pattern that wasn't tissue, and out came these beautiful buttons. They're definitely vintage, I would say probably from the 1940s, when this pattern is from. It comes with two large ones and nine small ones that are made out of some kind of cast metal. I'm not really sure. They look a bit tarnished or like the outside layer is rubbing off, but they really are quite lovely. I'm very excited to have found these in there. It's definitely a unique find. I'll give you that closer look. They're very highly detailed, and it looks like there's something reflective in the back, maybe some sort of jewel or mirror piece. I'm not sure what the original owner was planning to do with these since there's two large buttons and nine small ones, but I'm assuming she intended to use it for this suit jacket since it was shoved inside the pattern. You don't usually shove buttons inside patterns unless you intend to use them. And here we have some crispy pattern bits. Oops. I found a few extra fun random little things, including this 1960s ad for different aprons you could buy. And on the back side, we have robes and slippers. Very fun prints. And then there are these weird brown paper bag cut pieces of... I'm not really sure. There was no indication on any of the pieces except for these random pencil marks. And then I found this nice little envelope marked apron. And inside... It is a full apron pattern for Butterick 7617, which I looked up, and I'll put a picture. It is not an apron pattern. It is for a junior's dress with an apron pattern. So if you are missing your apron, please let me know, because that junior's dress does not exist anywhere in this box of patterns. And here we are moving on to some of the best and most surprising finds of this entire box. We have some antique patterns. This one was from around 1899. That was the only date I could find on it. And this one is a Butterick children's bonnet pattern. The babies look kind of creepy, but what can you expect from the turn of the century? The next one is a six month old. I believe this one said it is the children's first short clothes, which I don't know what that means, and it's from the New Idea Pattern Co., which I've never heard of them, so if you have heard of them, please let me know in the comments where these guys came from. And then we moved on to several patterns from the Standard Designer and Bell Robe. This is a child's romper, which is a very interesting design. Again, creepy little children from the 1920s. Here we have this little boy's suit, as they called it, another designer pattern with the bell robe. If somebody could tell me what these kids are playing with, what animal that is, I'm not sure if they're little puppies or hairless rabbits or guinea pigs or what. Um, somebody take your best guess and tell me down below in the comments, because I am genuinely concerned. Here we have another child's 1920 pattern. I thought it was interesting that they included the pattern numbers for the smocking and embroidery designs. And the only McCall's pattern. This is from 1921 for a little girl's dress. It looks to be smocked up at the top, which is really interesting with those pointed yokes. And has pin tucking across the bottom. It's a very sweet design. And now the most surprising... And the best find out of the whole thing, this very unassuming Southern Department Store bag included one of the best finds of my life. So I pulled it out. First thing on top is an old J.C. Penny receipt. It's made of really thick card. It doesn't have a year on it, but it has the day, June 3rd. The tissue is in pretty good condition, considering how old it is. It's got a few weird spots, but... Remove that, and here we have a beautiful pictorial review printed pattern for a nightgown from the 1920s. I couldn't tell exactly what year it was from, 
but it is for a bus 38 and it's definitely from the 1920s. I am absolutely going to be keeping this one since it is in such poor condition. It needs a lot of love and care. The tissue inside of it is actually an advertisement for a dressmaking book. Very fun find. I was really excited about it and absolutely just could not believe that that's what I was pulling out of that bag. And here we have the back where you can just see what those pattern pieces look like. They're just pretty long, straight, attached to a yoke. It'll be a pretty simple nightgown. I might decide to try to make this up. And pretty much all of the pattern pieces throughout this whole box were full of pins. So whoever owned this pattern was a short lady and I am not short. So I'm glad she pinned things up instead of cutting them because that will make things easier for me since I am quite tall. And here we have a review of some of my absolute favorite patterns. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed looking at all these beautiful patterns that I was able to pull out of this box. I got this off of eBay and was just a really fun find. I don't usually buy pattern lots, but this one was totally worth it. If you would like to see more pattern videos, just let me know down in the comments below. I have a lot of patterns. So yeah, have a wonderful day and I'll see you later. Bye.